She was an elite figure skater growing up with big Olympic dreams, but when it ended, she dove into self-destruction, falling into addiction. But while trying to hold herself together to complete her degree at Cornell, her life changed when she was arrested and sent to prison. Carrie Blakinger is here to discuss her journey and her new book, Corrections in Ink, a memoir. Thank you so much for joining us. You write about a pivotal moment in your life when your competitive figure skating career ended as a teenager, and you write that you decided to give into the decay and become radioactive. Tell us about that difficult moment in your life and what you meant exactly by those words. Well, what I meant was that you know, I'd grown up in skating and that was sort of my whole identity. I left the rink every, or I left school every day around like 10 or 11 to go to the rink and train and I'd be there till five or six. And um, as I was excelling in skating, I was also just struggling with some mental health issues. Um, I was very depressed as a kid. Um, I struggled with eating disorders. And then when skating fell apart, it just felt like there was nothing left to lose. And I was just going to fall apart to, you know, decay. That And that was how I described it. And you go on to become an Ivy Leaguer who began to struggle with addiction, which eventually landed you in prison after you were arrested carrying $150,000 worth of heroin in Tupperware. And in your book, you open up about all of your adversities from eating disorders, suicidal thoughts, and your spiral uh, with progressively harder drugs. I'm curious, how did you cope during the writing process, the retelling of all this? What was it like to, to really have to relive it? Well, on top of the fact that I was just reliving it, I was also doing this during a pandemic because most of this writing occurred in like 2020 and 21. So um, I was writing this like deep, dark personal memoir during a pandemic. And like, I don't know, zero out of 10, I do not recommend that as a writing <laughs> practice. But some of it is also a little familiar in that I, I cover prisons now as a reporter. So I'm sort of familiar with writing with uh, writing about really dark things. A lot of people who have gone through a similar experience would leave prison and never look back. But your transition coming out of prison is really a feat in and of itself. Tell us about that and what opportunities that you may have had that others didn't. Well, I was very lucky to end up in a career where I could use the worst parts of my past to, you know, to make something good. Um, and it was so, so by chance that I ended up having someone that was a friend of a friend who... Um, came to interview me about journalism or about being in in jail and um, ended up being like, hey, do you do you want to, you know, write some for us? Do you want to try some journalism? And um, that was I was really lucky about that. But you know, one of the big takeaways I hope that some people get from my book is that even though I've been a success story, there's a lot of systemic barriers that can explain some of the reasons why not everyone comes out of prison and enjoys the level of success that I have. And, you know, that includes things like white privilege and class privilege and just the fact that I had um, people who supported me financially when I came out so that I was able to have some sort of starting place to get a foothold. And a lot of people don't have that. So as much as I hope that people who are inside read this and, you know, have some hope of a second chance, I also hope that people who are on the outside read this and understand why not everybody has a second chance. And as you briefly mentioned just a moment ago, you now work as an investigative reporter for the Marshall Project, a nonprofit news organization covering the U.S. criminal justice system. Why was it important for you to use your experience with incarceration in order to amplify voices who are experiencing time behind bars and the challenging conditions that many face there? I mean, I didn't actually set out to do that. I, I think that it seemed almost trite or predictable or like people would think that as a former prisoner that was all i could do was cover prisons um so i started out with a more normal sort of path of general assignment and breaking news but then when one of my editors said hey do you want to start covering death penalty um that sort of expanded into covering prisons and jails and criminal justice more broadly and i realized that it was something that not only was i good at in part because of my past but also that it was something where when i would report a story or do an investigation that would have impact um the value of that really resonated with me because of where i'd been and now that you have come out on the other side here, what advice do you have for those who feel that they're experiencing their own downward spiral? Oh, wow, that's a tough one. Um, I feel like that's asking me to, you know, solve addiction. But, <laughs> um, I mean, I think one of the one of the things is that, 
you know, when this all sort of started for me and when things started really going badly, you know, I was pretty young. And I mean, I absolutely didn't believe people who said that this was not forever, you know, but I mean, things seemed really bad to me in the moment at 17 when, you know, my skating career and what I thought was my whole life was falling apart. Um, and obviously as an adult, 20 years later, I've had so many, so much more life and so many more experiences. And I realized that wasn't the end. Um, but I don't know that there's any way that adults can tell teenagers that in a way they believe, you know, that's just something you learn. And have to maybe experience firsthand. Yeah. Carrie Blakinger, we thank you so much for talking with us. Her new book, Corrections in Ink, a memoir, is available wherever books are sold. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.